Hello everyone, my name is Rob Lutfi and in this video we are going to talk about acidification, a threat to our oceans. And these are the main subjects for this video and so without any further ado, let's get started with our video. Okay, so among the many threats to the water quality posed by human activity, the most extreme is burning fossil fuels. Uh, which, as you might have heard uh, in the news, it releases vast amounts of carbon dioxide into uh, the atmosphere, which in turn causes global warming and climate change issues, Okay, which I am certain that you have heard in the news many times. And now let's go to the oceanic part of the problem. Okay, so about 25% of human generated carbon dioxide is absorbed by water or water in the oceans. Okay, and in spite of the huge volume of water in the oceans, scientists worry that the absorption of so much carbon dioxide uh, can uh, and will harm marine ecosystems. Okay, uh, and the fact is that recent data. Uh, have shown that such worries and fears are well founded. So when carbon dioxide dissolves in seawater, it reacts with water to form carbonic acid. And if you had watched my previous video, uh, you would have said to yourself, isn't this the same reaction that happens in our blood? blood uh, and I would say that you are very exactly correct because uh, this is exactly the same reaction okay but in a very smaller scale and as you should remember uh, the, the result of this reaction is the lowering of pH of the solution and this is not that hard to find out because uh, carbonic acid has the acid uh, name in it Okay, so yeah, that is not really that uh, hard. And this process is known as ocean acidification, okay, uh, which as you know, it alters the delicate uh, balance of life in marine environments or oceans, okay. Uh, and as you can see in this picture, uh, we have uh, that, no, sorry. It has been written that carbon dioxide plus uh, water uh, equals carbonic acid and then carbonic acid uh, dissociates and forms uh, hydrogen ions uh, which are the main part of the acidification part uh, and bicarbonate okay uh, and you can just ignore the two other uh, equations that are under it or remember it because we are going to talk about them uh, in a few slides in the future uh, okay so let's just think for example uh, that we want to know the, uh, the approximately how much carbon dioxide was in the air uh, for example 420,000 years ago okay uh, at first uh, we have to have a sample of that times uh, air okay and so the next problem is how do we get that sample okay and uh, FYI we don't have any uh, time machines in the year 2022 so we have to do something come up with something else Okay, and I guess uh, we don't have any place uh, that has a bunker and uh, that has the samples in it, or do we? So let me explain with an example. Have you ever seen uh, when water is frozen, a couple of bubbles get trapped in the ice and uh, here you can see a picture uh, of that in the left corner okay uh, so yeah bubbles can form inside uh, ice so what uh, so if we have a if we have a place that uh, has these bubbles inside it and uh, inside ice uh, we can uh, approximately uh, have the samples that we were talking about okay so one uh, very obvious place to find these uh, ices or bubbles inside ice is the biggest store of ice in 
on the earth okay so and that's the arctic ice or arctic glaciers okay uh, which uh, and so this is exactly the same thing uh, that uh, happens in these uh, ices okay and here's an uh, example of some scientists that are taking out uh, some ice and uh, doing research on the, the bubbles okay and here you can see that picture and so based on uh, these measurements of carbon dioxide levels in the air bubbles scientists calculate uh, that the ocean's pH has decreased 0.1 something degrees in these uh, in this 420,000 years uh, you might think that is really not a big number uh, but uh, the scary part is that uh, some studies uh, have predicted that the pH will drop another 0.3 to 0.5 uh, pH units by the end of this century, okay? So the rate is going very up, so yeah, it's not that a good sign. And as seawater uh, sea acidifies, uh, the extra hydrogen ions uh, combine with carbonate ions to form bicarbonate. And we know this equation uh, from my previous videos uh, and thereby reducing the carbonate ion concentration and scientists predict that ocean acidification will cause the carbonate ion concentration to decrease by 40% uh, by the year uh, 2100 uh, and you might be asking yourself why is this a big deal so it's a big deal uh, because uh, the carbonic uh, carbonate uh, ion requires for uh, calcium carbonate product. Uh, sorry, let me uh, rephrase that. Uh, it's a big deal because uh, carbonate ions are are required for calcium carbonate production, uh, and that's because uh, that is really important. Uh, for uh, many marine organisms uh, I mean calcium uh, uh, carbonate okay and because they build their exoskeletons uh, and other protections uh, around themselves uh, and so if uh, there are there isn't enough uh, calcium carbonate in the uh, oceans okay that will uh, very cause harm to these animals okay uh, because they will not be able to make any more uh, protection okay uh, and so some examples uh, of these animals are coral and yes coral is not a plant it's a kind of animal like creature uh, that and other animals uh, that build shells okay and you know uh, and as you know uh, or have heard in the news coral reefs, coral reefs uh, are sensitive uh, to their ecosystems uh, acidification and uh, they are they themselves are ecosystems uh, that uh, are home uh, for many diverse marine life so uh, by harming the coral we are harming the many diverse uh, marine life that uh, call these places home and so uh, when coral reefs uh, disappear uh, it would be a tragic loss of biological diversity and a great loss of beauties uh, some of the main beauties uh, are inside no in the world and so for the last part of this video uh, I would like to say uh, that if there is any reason for optimism about the future quality of water resources uh, on our uh, planet it is that we have made progress in learning about the delicate uh, chemical balances in oceans, lakes, and rivers. Uh, continued progress can come only from the quality-informed uh, individuals, uh, quality, uh, you know, sorry, uh, from the actions uh, informed uh, 
uh, actions of informed individuals like yourselves who are concerned about uh, environmental quality and so this uh, requires understanding the uh, crucial role uh, that water plays in uh, in the suitability of the environment uh, for continued life on earth and so that was all for this video and so as always until the next video happy learnings to all